Hey guys, and welcome back on our journey to unravel the case of Son Jung Min, the medical student who ended up dead after floating in the Han River for five days. Police are still trying to investigate this case, wrap it up, and see whether this was just an accident or whether there was something else or someone else involved. And now things have taken a twist because the way the investigation has been going, a lot of people in Korea are beginning to suspect the police themselves. So in situations like this in the past, if the citizens had doubts about the police or authority, what do they really have as evidence to go on besides innuendo or in this case, observing Mr. A and his family's behavior, saying that that doesn't seem normal. Now, you can't really go to a court of law and say they weren't acting normally. Uh, you can't really go with suspicious circumstantial evidence, even though a lot of this case looks very suspicious. But there has been one development that the people do have on their side in this case, and that is CCTV footage. Now, granted, a lot of people have asked like, wow, um, shouldn't there be more CCTV footage, especially in Seoul, you know, land of Korea and all of its technology? And I, I don't know why, but maybe it's because they're trying to somewhat protect our privacy because, you know, from space, they can see like with their satellite, like what you're serving at your backyard barbecue. I don't know how, like they can do that but not see like across the river but we do have some cctv that can shed some light on this so we've seen some of the more obvious cctv clips and what i wanted to go over are some of the crucial cctv clips that have been in the mainstream media and then also some of the ones that are really hard to interpret but have been put out there and may actually give us the complete timeline, including the missing blackout time period that we have been wondering what happened. Remember, we're looking at a period of about 10.30 p.m. on April 24th to about 6 a.m. on April 25th with the real crucial part where we're missing the climax of the story at around 3.38 a.m. to 4.20 a.m. That's the part that is the darkest in terms of what happened to Son Jung Min's life. And also, nobody knows what happened except for probably Mr. A. This is the easy part. These are the CCTV footage clips that we've seen played numerous times now. We've seen people enter, exit. That is the tunnel into the Riverside Park. And then the convenience store when the night started. So we noticed Mr. A's properly fitting shoes that are in good condition. Mr. A's letterman jacket and shorts, white long sleeve t-shirt that fits snugly at the collar and the backpack, so there are no new interpretations here, but later on when he leaves, they're saying his shirt had been dragged down, his shoes had been stretched out and they looked wet and the shoelaces looked like they were flopping around because perhaps he had been in the river. So why do I wanna share some of these clips beyond what we've already seen? Well, we can see some compelling evidence that shows perhaps when Mr. A and SJM actually, actually left the grassy knoll and went into the riverbank area and did not emerge. There's also clearer evidence of whether the eyewitnesses are telling the truth or not. There's also clearer evidence from the CCTV footage whether some eyewitnesses even existed or whether they were made up but overall, it should settle our doubts whether we should pursue our suspicions. Because in a case like this, it's not comfortable for us to point the finger at somebody who might be innocent. Even though we may have suspicions from what we can see, 
there has to be a little bit more of an evidence-backed reason for pursuing even more of an investigation. But I have to warn you, this is not going to be easy. If you are like a ghost hunter and you love those kind of shows with maybe like looking at shadows and like interpreting those kind of um, grainy images, then this is totally up your alley. If you have to watch like The Simpsons in like HD Ultra 8K, then this might be a little bit tough because we are going to go into zoom, 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 zoom land. I'm going to try to make it a lot easier than what I had to go through to try to figure this out. So we're going to go in chronological order so that we can kind of get a clearer sense of what happened that night and cross check it with what reports we've already had to see whether those were accurate or true. Okay, so like I said, we're very comfortable with the two walking into the park. We're very comfortable with the two getting their snacks and their alcohol. And then they go to the grassy knoll area. Let's get a bird's eye view of the river park area because you're going to have to picture the exact area in your mind by looking at grainy images. So here is some shots of the entire river park area. I wanna show you some of the area um, like a bird's eye view, like a drone footage, as if you're kind of, as if you're the ghost of Son Jung Min looking down from the heavens, uh, from the middle of the river, looking down towards the park. You can kind of see a bird's eye view of the landscape. I think it's important to also see, like from that angle, the tunnel. You know, what does the tunnel look like? Because we've all we've already seen the inside of the tunnel and then we've seen uh, the CCTV camera that is right above the tunnel entrance that's uh, on the park side. The CCTV angle that we have the most, the thing that is the perspective that we see the most is from the entrance of the tunnel. That gives us the greatest bird's eye view and that is actually the camera that gets zoomed all the way out towards the riverfront. That's what makes it a little bit challenging. When it zooms, it is going to zoom past a pole, past another pole, past like two branches that turn into a Y, and then they're sitting there. And you're going to have to see movement back and forth so like there's a pole, right? So you're gonna have to like wait for them to move back and forth in between like this. Um, there's the grassy knoll that they're sitting on. There's a pathway that people walk along. Then there's the embankment where they go down. And then that's the river area. Towards the far outside, you see the dark river of the water. You see the portions of the bridge some of the lights, the car headlights passing by, and in some of the shots, the lights from the apartment buildings or street lamps. I also wanna give you a preview of where they were sitting in relation to the recorded eyewitnesses, according to the police. Now, there is, from this CCTV footage, we can see that there have been eyewitnesses that were not called, that were much closer, than some of these people. And I should also mention that it's not just CCTV footage. We have now additional photographs with timestamps. I don't know why still, but people just love to go out to the Han River and stay at the park until three, four in the morning. They're taking pictures. I mean, it is a pretty bridge. So I guess they're like, you know, they're taking pictures. Well, thank goodness it's a pretty bridge. And so they, they're taking pictures in that direction and that's where they were. Also, there are some reporters that went to the exact spot so you could see exactly where they uh, sat down and the angle of the photograph, the 218 keeled over photograph. We have a daytime shot of that. So when I'm showing you like some of these dark nighttime scenes, I also want to put in 
some references to the daytime version so you can kind of picture it all at once. Okay, so let's start the chronological order. At 1.12 a.m., they ordered samgyeopsal from Coupon Eats. So it's basically like a delivery service for food and meals. Samgyeopsal, of course, very delicious uh, pork belly. And that was at 1.12 a.m. He used his app. Remember, the police said there was no app or internet usage after 1.09 a.m. And then they had to revise that statement later. Anyhow, so then we saw a video of them running. We've seen this before. Like they're just walking and suddenly they're running, right? And we're like, why are they running? So most likely because that was at 1.33 a.m. And that's when we have the recorded phone call of SJM talking to the delivery man. So most likely the delivery man was like, hey, where are you guys? You guys said that you're going to be over here and I'm waiting for you. So they probably had to run to go get their food. Then now... The now it begins. Now the zoom -a zoom zoom begins. So we see them move along to the spot that we believe is their picnic area. So we're going to redesignate that as the picnic area. After a while, you'll get used to seeing spots as people moving. The key to being able to recognize people is to have the picture of what it looks like in the daytime so you can kind of recognize the lines as what's a path what's a tree you know what's a border that falls into the embankment so during this time they're eating you can even see them climb a tree fall down so even now they're cross-referencing 1.50 a.m., remember they filmed this video of them just like horsing around and the, the, the thing where he's kowtowing and they're talking about Golden. And so you can see them starting filming that video. So 1.54 a.m. is when he's doing the kneeling posture on the video. Now, the next point of interest is the 2A team keeled over picture. What we can see now is the 218 a.m. CCTV footage showing a bright spot, Mr. A on his phone. And this bright spot that looks like a cell phone and not like a flash, not like a light from a car or anything, it's from a cell phone, continues, continues, continues until 2.43 a.m. So witnesses there said that when they left, the two were lying down next to each other, and that was about 2.50 a.m. And so that matches. It also matches some of the usage data that they said was just background app. Also, just to go back to the dubious cell phone story, so the police said that, you know, this cell phone... Mr. A was not using SJM's phone, even though he had it in his possession. He was not using SJM's phone. In fact, SJM just used the phone the last for the last time at 1.33 a.m. when he was talking to the um, delivery man for the food. But it turns out that Mr. A reportedly had very low battery at like 1% when he was even meeting up with SJM because he had been already drinking all night you know he met up with sjm at like 10 or 10 30 and there's even a receipt on the receipt of uh, one of their purchases at the convenience store usb cable so obviously he's like looking to charge it okay so from this cctv footage we are confirming the 218 keeled over picture and also the cell phone usage of mr a until 2 43 a.m we're cross-referencing it with the actual keeled over picture where also cross-referencing it from the reporters going to the scene and reenacting the exact angle and matching it up with the police record of where those witnesses who actually took the picture said they were sitting. So that all matches up. Those witnesses who took the picture seem to be extremely legit. Of course, the question was, what was Mr. A doing on the cell phone and whose cell phone while SJM was keeled over. Now, 
this is only a theory and these are some theories that people have been putting out there and of course by now you probably have your own theory so share them below but one very compelling theory is that besides the fact that maybe he was looking up like oh my god what do i do if my friend is overdosed this nosy mr a if he is nosy supposedly went through some of the messages of his friend's phone and remember when sjm was talking to his other friend who had to stay at home and study and he's saying like oh my god like he was telling his friend oh my god like um mr a is asking me to like Go and drink with him all of a sudden like i don't know what's up with that and the uh, the other friend um said like you have to study and then towards the end he said like oh did somebody like come back from the dead and then so we're trying to interpret you know what does that mean so apparently for younger people these days that means like yeah really we haven't been on good terms so we're just gonna you know hang out again there's a theory that basically Mr. A had been ostracized by the friend group, but he didn't know. So he's like, oh, you guys are talking crap about me. And he probably maybe he looked at other phone messages and like, dang, you know, you guys are talking crap about me. And perhaps he was like, when this guy wakes up, I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> That's one, one theory. Why? Wait until we see the footage at 3.30. Now we see at 3.12 a.m. some movement more passers-by the first passers-by in a while they seem like they are stopping to take a look they're like what's that and then they just walk on by then the next movement is a group at 325 starts clearing their stuff folding up their mat then they leave apparently by this time it looks like sjm and mr a have woken up and you can kind of see them also take their stuff back and forth and it looked like they just wanted to shift their spot now that the other people have left they wanted to grab their spot i guess maybe it was much better and so you could kind of see some of their movement because there's no other person there so it seemed now when you do you know, during this whole process the thing that becomes suspicious is that 328 a flash can be seen a flash so it looks like another photo so now the suspicion is if so where is that witness because that witness is just right there smack in the middle even closer than probably all the other witnesses that are on the police report where is that witness so it looks like the people who are left on that grassy knoll are just Mr. A, SJM, and whoever took that flash photo. Now remember, we're at 328. Now, this is the climax. 3.30 to 3.31 a.m. This is really hard to see, but give it a chance. You can go up really close, and then sometimes it helps if you go really far back try to get a sense what it looks like if you look at the left side of the pole and then you can follow a movement to the right side so what the theory is is that they're closer to the embankment and both of them are on the left side of your screen both of them are on the left side of that pole and then mr a pushes or shoves SJM and that's why you see that sudden movement and a fall and then about five seconds later you see another movement that drops down but slower as if somebody's like hopping down to follow so take a look at it again there's definitely a fall whether he fell on his own or whether he got pushed we don't know but we do see that there are two figures that went down the embankment. Now, the other thing that is creepy, we can call it the denouement of this climax, is that there are actually two passers-by around the same time towards the right of the screen. Did you see? 
they sort of you could kind of see them they're just sort of hanging out and they're like what oh wait what what the hell what just happened over there and they walk over and they pause at that spot where you go down and it looks like they got freaked out and they start running to the left of your screen they look like they were scared these people are also not on the witness list so if we believe this theory by 3 31 a.m mr a and sjm are on the riverbank whether sjm was pushed or whether he fell we don't know but according to mr a initially when he was first questioned where we had the father of sjm in his presence remember when he said that oh sjm had started running and he fell down a grassy hill and that's when i had to drag him back up i don't know where it was i don't know what time it was i was just so like passed out drunk blacked out i don't remember a thing but i guess i remember that and so he said like he was he dragged him up now if we believe that story perhaps this is one that happened 3 31 a.m they fell down according to mr a's story to keep him innocent he would have dragged him back to the grassy knoll, propped SJM up, and then at 3.38 a.m., a witness would say, oh yeah, um, when I was leaving, I saw both of them and SJM was sitting up. So that establishes that SJM was still on the grassy knoll at 3.38 a.m. Remember we said 3.38 a.m., the two were sitting on the grassy knoll. That's why 3.38 a.m. was the cutoff point of when the two were alive. But we were counting on an eyewitness account. Now it turns out, if we look at a picture that was taken right at that spot at 3.38 a.m., that witness may not have even existed. That witness may not have even existed. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.